All right, welcome to the Bears Gym today. We are uh, tackling, currently, the book of Isaiah. Today we are in chapter 24. We're going to talk about a little shaking up of the earth. Many good biblical scholars believe that before the earth as we know it, that the earth was somewhat in place and during the fall of Satan, there was another shakeup. And then we have, after that time, the earth as we know it. Don't know how that true it is because none of us were there. Um, so, either case, the world we see now, the earth, the heavens, the stars, the constellations, the sun, the moon, it is as God has created it, as we know it. And so, here in Isaiah 24, we're going to talk about the next shakeup. And for sure, we live in a world that is quite godless. A lot of false relig religions, isms, uh, atheism, Satan worship, so forth. Everything but the worship of the one true God through Jesus Christ. And thus we have the wickedness that is upon the earth now that is ramped up to a feverish pitch. And everything is defended in the name of freedom of speech and interpersonal rights and so forth. <clears throat> and eventually the wickedness upon the earth as before the flood will shake up the wrath of God. So today in Isaiah 24, we're dealing with a time prior to Israel being taken into captivity. They're just in the stages of their first warnings from God. And as he warns Israel of their impending doom and discipline, judgment, he also gives some light to the end times of him judging the earth and the tribulation, if you've ever heard of the term the tribulation before. God does judge nations in this year, 2014, in the last probably decade, I have seen many nations being judged by God. Usually it provokes the nations around them to start pouring monies and funds and so forth. Unfortunately, what it does not bring was an overall nationwide repentance and turning to the one true God through Jesus Christ. We just don't see that. <clears throat> Even in our own nation, we have our had our own 911 situation. Rose Americans up, but for the most part, not necessarily to repentance, just to war, um, to pouring of money into New York City, into programs and so forth. Not necessarily a repentance to Jesus Christ, as it should have. But now let's move along here. Let's see what God has in store for not only Israel in the end times, but the earth, all of us, those of us that remain, to see the, the final battle kind of unfold. Um, the Christian church, I believe, will be picked up off of this earth prior to the tribulation period, and we will have a bird's eye view from heaven of all the activity upon the earth. Whatever your feelings are, it will take place, and neither you or I can stop it or influence it whatsoever. <clears throat> so here we go, Isaiah 24. 
Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty, and maketh it waste, and turneth it upside down, and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. That's massive. Whatever it is, it's massive. When the Lord says he's going to take the earth and make it waste, he means it. And it shall be as with the people, so with the priest, as with the servant, so with his master, as with the maid, so with her mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the borrower, as with the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury to him. The land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled, for the Lord has spoken this word. And what does that mean? I'll tell you what it means. It means it's going to apply to everybody. It's going to mean that the hypocrites, the pastors, the leaders of the organized church, the corporations that are not real, they're not lovers of Jesus Christ, simply taking the job of being a leader, all the way down to the drunkard, to the merchantman, to the sports athlete, God will judge all without favoritism. If you commit sin and wickedness, you will be cast in with a bunch of the judged. Verse 5, the earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore hath the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. The inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men are left. <clears throat> God will judge the world with tribulation. Man also will bring his own calamities by the laws we try to transgress. We see them in the uh, polar caps attempting to do some meltdown. We see that down in Antarctica. They're dropping steam drills down the ice uh, flows and drilling big holes in them. And we're seeing big packs of ice melted off into the ocean, breaking off, so forth. We see them shooting rockets off into outer space at meteors. I've seen this a few years back. Nuclear warheads blasting off into space to meet in oncoming meteors and so forth that possibly would get close to Earth, causing then nuclear fallout in the space. We see um, cloud seeding. We see various things that are happening in the earth that try to shake up the natural effect, which will in of itself bring a, your own curse because they are put in place to bring balance to the world. We see them lighting off nuclear weapons in the ocean floors. We see um, accidents, nuclear accidents that are, for the most part, we don't really know about in the civilized world, a few know, but those things go on and they cause seismic activity, activity to happen in the oceans, which ensue tidal waves, uh, so forth and so on. A lot of the ozone depletion we see a lot of cancer now that they never saw in the old days. We see weird, um, weird uh, situations that really haven't been encountered before. We, we cause huge oil flows to pour into our oceans and our gulfs and our seas because we're drilling out there to get oil out of the ground and then the pipes break and that causes huge oil spills that causes a a huge effect upon the marine life and so forth, fresh water supplies and so forth. So sometimes we're our own worst enemies, trying to be too smart in the world. 
All right, verse 7. The new wine mourneth, the vine languisheth, all the merry-hearted do sigh. The party years are going to take a break for a while as God judges the earth. It won't last long. They will, when there's a break in the action, they are going to they revert back to their drunkenness and their partying and their fornication and their wickedness. But they'll sigh because their parties have been interrupted. The mirth of the tabrets ceaseth. The noise of them that rejoice endeth. The joy of the harp ceaseth. They shall not drink wine with a song. Strong drink shall be bitter to them that drink it. The city of confusion is broken down. Every house is shut up that no man may come in. There is a crying for wine in the streets. All joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. In the city is left desolation and the gate is smitten with destruction. When thus it shall be in the midst of the land among the people, there shall be as the shaking of an olive tree and as the gleaning grapes when the vintage is done. They shall lift up their voice. They shall sing for the majesty of the Lord. They shall cry aloud from the sea. Wherefore glorify ye the Lord in the fires, even the name of the Lord of Israel in the isles of the sea. Interesting things will happen when God judges the earth. As many in the four corners of the earth, as the Bible calls it, just basically means distant lands, distant seas, distant peoples that are not quite as attached to the civilized world as you know, we here are in the United States and wherever you might be. Sometimes four corners of the earth can also indicate those in the heavens. We see a space station floating in the sky right now. People live up there for months at a time. We have satellites spinning around Mars to find a suitable uh, anchoring spot for possible colonies. Um, we see man going under the seas and, and huge um, submarines. So four corners means four corners of the earth and even possibly beyond. Just in that day, they wouldn't really know what that meant. Okay, so you can take it from the narrow version and take it to the large version. In either case, God will affect all mankind, and there's no place you can hide. Even if you was to take a, a spaceship to Mars and burrow deep into the depths of Mars, God will still take you from there. He can both visit you in kindness or judge you. And, and just because of what you say and where your heart is at. There is no place God cannot reach out and touch you. From the uttermost part of the earth have we heard songs, even glory to the righteous. But I said, my leanness, my leanness, woe unto me. The treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously, yea, the treacherous dealers have dealt very treacherously. Just because kind of an offshoot. If you've done business with somebody and they've ripped you off, don't do business with them again. If somebody rips you off once, don't keep doing business with them. Okay. If you've dealt with lawyers before and they always basically are looking to take your money, don't do business again. Understand that litigation and so forth is a game for the rich. And sometimes when us middle class workers try to fight for what's right through the whole legal system, we get burned and bogged down financially because we try to get ourselves involved in things too difficult for us because it's too far over our head. Okay, that's just a side note. We're moving along. Isaiah 24, verse 17. Fear and the pit and the snare are upon thee, O inhabitant of the earth. And it shall come to pass that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit. And he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare. For the windows from on high are open and the foundations of the earth do shake. The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean. 
dissolved, the earth is moved exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard, and shall be removed like a cottage, and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it, and it shall fall and not rise again. Jesus said there's going to be a new heavens and the new earth. He meant it. He didn't mean in a figurative or a philosophical sense. He meant it. One day, the earth as we know it will be scrunched up like a piece of paper and thrown away, be gone. The heavens as we see it will be rolled up and they'll be gone. But then there's going to be a new heavens and a new earth in which only righteousness dwells. That's going to be a lovely day and I can't wait to see it. I'll be really glad when the fight of the constant evil giving, getting shoved down your throat and affecting your children, I'll be glad when that battle is over and we live in righteousness forever and ever and ever. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to that. Verse 21, it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high and the kings of the earth upon the earth and they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit and shall be shut up in the prison and after many days they shall be visited or judged. You know what's interesting is at this point Jesus has the keys of death and hell. But Satan and his angels have some access to the spiritual realm. The day is coming will they will not. That day is coming. They're going to land here on earth and there's all of hell is going to break loose on earth, literally. But right now, they have some access to the spiritual realm to accuse those who are choosing to serve Christ. The accuser of the brethren is Satan and his angels. One day, their position in the heavens, in the spiritual realm, not the third heaven, but the spiritual, the realm that we can't see, that position will be removed from them and they will be cast to the earth. Then the moon shall be confounded and the sun ashamed when the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem and before his ancients gloriously. So one day the Lord is going to round up all of us saints, those who are his followers, his believers, those disciples of his, and we are going to rule and reign with him, not out of arrogance, just out of obedience and love. That is going to be one of our uh, positions in uh, the new, in the eternal realm. And God will bring a tribulation upon this earth. Um, those of us that are followers of Christ will re be removed from this earth. The nation of Israel will go through that tribulation through many sufferings, and the remnant of them will be brought through it um, as through fire, will be protected. And those that remain on this earth will be 100% devoted to Yeshua, Jesus Christ. But God will bring Israel through the fire once again. And then they shall shine in the kingdom of God. Um, in the thousand year reign, they will kind of be the lights upon the earth. Um, the Arab and the Syrian and the foreigner and the Palestinians and whomever that are left on the earth will join with Israel in worshiping Elohim, Yahweh, in the sacrifices that they had um, prior to the nation of Israel being kind of disseminated in the dispersion, the animal sacrifices and so forth, will again take place during the thousand year reign as a picture, as a represent, representative of what has happened before and in remembrance of what Christ has already done for them. But it is for them as Israel because that was given to Israel as like one of their covenants of, as, a, as, a merry, as a merry thing to do unto the Lord. And it's a, it will be a blessing to them. Um, 
but that will go on during the thousand year reign as something special for Israel. And in that day, the, the Arab and the Egyptian and the Assyrian and so forth, they will meet and they will also call upon the name of the Lord, not on the ism that they foolishly worship now. <clears throat> so that day is coming, um, but it um, could be soon, could be far. We don't really know, but um, I believe we have a time yet uh, elapsed upon the earth um, before that all plays out. The rapture of the church can happen at any time. Nothing really needs to be fulfilled. I mean, we're, we're ready to go. Um, the Lord paid the price on the cross, was resurrected, is at the right hand of the Father, and, and whenever it's time, he's coming for us. So nothing really needs to you know, play out. Uh, when he's ready, we're gone, and I'll be glad. So you can join us if you choose. Um, simply ask the Lord Jesus for forgiveness. Ask him to come in your heart and follow him the very best that you can, and he will help you, help you in every form of the way that you can say help. Because Jesus said his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And when he says that, he means it. So eternal forgiveness and the spiritual born-again process is all on God's shoulders. All you have to do is say yes and be willing to obey. And then obey. Simple as that. So... From the Bears Gym, God bless you. See you next time.